So what she does is she takes her right foot, crosses all the way over, presses the clutch in. So Tallahassee, Florida isn't known for too many things. If anything, it's known for FSU. And if there's anything that's known for, it's being like the number one party school in the country, or perhaps number three in sexually transmitted disease. All great esteems to Don, but nevertheless, not any that I was particularly interested in. And I, growing up, um, people always treated me as like being like this crazy kid, like super risky and the funny part was like, I always assumed I was really risk averse. Like I never go out and drink or party. I don't think I've ever smoked on purpose. Um, <laughs> but I like do driving and I do trials bikes and I do other stuff that people deem like rather risky. A car meet, which has since died for reasons unbeknownst to me since I moved away was Tally Imports. And Tally Imports was a Thursday night meet at a pizza place and after maybe about half the meets, there would be some sort of like half-hearted drama form that led to a street race, but really anyone was just looking for an excuse to go. <laughs> and uh, so you'd see like maybe five to 10 cars drive out every single time they'd miss the turn for the thing and then all 10 cars would have to turn around. Um, but we get out to the spot, which is about 20, 30 minutes away from the meet, and then you just do runs. And like sometimes it was strangely official, like people had portable light trees and sometimes it was hilariously like gorilla. Usually this happened at night for obvious reasons. Like you can see headlights coming further away and you can hide. There's no more traffic at like 11 or 12 PM in these places. You can also send spotters. Like generally speaking, like it's just more advantageous to do this sort of stuff at night in that location. And one day for whatever time constraint I had in my busy life when I was like on a gap year in Tallahassee, Florida, I decided that I wanted to find out how much I could make up for a car having twice the horsepower of my car with the fact that I had all wheel drive and like drove it pretty hard. So there was a guy that had a black EcoBoost Mustang that I believe was full bolt-ons without a larger turbo. Like so full bolt-ons except for turbo and he had an access port with an off the shelf tune. So it wasn't making like crazy power, but it was definitely substantially more powerful than my, my little Subaru. And so we went out to the same spot that we'd normally go at night. And it wasn't like there was any traffic to speak of, but when a car goes by every minute and you have people spotting like a car every minute is a problem. And so coming from both directions, I think it was around spring break. So there was people like coming back in Panama City and going to, and we ended up having to wait for like 15, 20 minutes for a clearing. And in that time, apparently one of the cars that drove by was an off duty uh, sheriff's deputy. And so he couldn't really do anything or didn't want to or whatever. So he just like called it into FHP or Florida Highway Patrol. I guess they were reasonably far away or he came towards the end of our waiting period to actually go because we lined up, did the race. I was surprisingly even with this Mustang until the end of second gear. And as soon as I shifted the third, he was just like, <laughs> and uh, so he goes in front of me, I fall behind him and we go around the turn, slow down. And then I was actually recording the launch because like, I just wanted to see what it looked like. So I drive back and go get my camera. And in this time I hear that apparently like his intercooler piping blew off during the race. So like he's trying to like fix that under the bumper. So I go back, grab the camera, put it in the car, um, luckily in the back seat behind the passenger seat. And for all of this, there's actually a friend of mine named Sierra. Somehow the paradigm of working with cars to try and impress girls comes back, but she had wanted to see this whole spectacle. So I had mentioned it in passing like the day before that this is gonna be happening. And she said, oh, I wanna come, can I come? And I was like thinking, all I could think was, I'll put her in the back of the Mustang. This will help, this will be helpful. It'll slow the Mustang down, maybe I'll win, and that'll impress her. Great, all handled, I'm a genius. And so she's in the Mustang for the race, but then when I turn around to go get the camera, she gets back in my car, and then when I come back to the Mustang, because he was towards the way that we would take to get home, I noticed that he's been stopped by a Florida Highway Patrol officer, and that there's another one in the lane coming towards me. And I have a, what you could call, slightly conspicuous car at the time, with pink plastic dip wheels, stickers all over the back window and side windows with my Instagram on it. And it's a WRX, so it's got like a big hood scoop and a tiny little spoiler on the back. It's hard to say that when you're next to a Mustang, 
no, we weren't the ones that were just reported for lighting up street race. Like it's not a plausible argument really. And so we drive back and the Mustang drove off because apparently the guy was on parole. And so the first thing he did because they never saw his street racing, they just pulled over to like check on him was, am I being detained or am I free to go? And so they're like, you're free to go. So he left. And then I thinking, well, they didn't, they didn't see us do anything. We're legally impervious at this point. I mean, no, no reason to be a, a dick to them. So I'll just stop and give them my license, registration, and everything. So I pull off and I'm like, this is unfortunate, but I'm gonna be fine. Like they didn't see anything. I was doing the speed limit. Everything's up to date in my car and it's Florida, so window tint doesn't matter. And Sierra's in the passenger seat at this point. And so, <laughs> so I think there were like, I don't know if this was planned or this was just the nature of the two police officers, but it seemed like a comically like clear good cop, bad cop situation going on. And so one of them is super nice, super accommodating, asked for the driver's license and the registration. I give it to him, I'm kind of used to that at this point. He goes back to his car and starts running it. And the other one is just like drilling me morally speaking. He like tells you, he explains like why they're there. Oh yeah, we got a call from an off duty officer. He said, look like two cars are about to line up and race. So he called us out here and not too many cars with uh, orange, red, pink wheels because <laughs> at the time they were stained by all the clay from the dirt roads that we drove on so it was hard to tell and he just like leaned out of the car trying to decide what color these wheels were <laughs> but then he leaned back in and i had to sort of concede to that point but nevertheless like still legally impervious in my mind so he sort of gives me the the moral disciplinary stuff and then the other officer comes back and says what i'm expecting him to say is like all right well you know just be safe don't do dumb stuff go home but instead what he says was, Did, were you aware that your license was suspended? And I said, no, because I wasn't. Uh, and this is actually true. And I'm not saying that for like legal reasons because there is two different versions of a ticket in Florida. One is unknowing license suspension, which like they have to take your license and need a ticket. Knowing license suspension is like a misdemeanor. So that would have been bad and luckily, we talked about it and they realized that I was very clueless. So at this point, I'm sort of confused. I'm still not particularly worried because it's very clear that this is like a systemic fluke or something, but nevertheless, for policy reasons and probably because they just wanted to get me for something, uh, they had to take the license like physically from me, which meant I definitely, they know that I don't have a license anymore, meaning I can't drive. And it is a manual Subaru and I am at this point 30 miles away from home and I'm 30 miles away from any friend that might be able to pick me up that's probably at work anyway. We start calling people on the side of the road, the officers are staying there to make sure I don't leave. And I go down my list of contacts looking for people, no one's free, no one can come out, or at least not like someone that can come out with their car and then drive my car. Because usually the people that were free, they also had manuals. So if they have to drive my car and I can't drive, then that doesn't really help the situation at all. I have no one that's available. My pastor has no one that's available and suddenly we just have the realization that looks like someone's gonna drive a manual for the first time today. Both of the officers just seem to have lost all vindictive attitude at this realization and they're just happy as anything to point me to the nearest dirt road where I can teach her how to drive a manual transmission in my car. And uh, we get on the dirt road and I remember the, f <laughs> I, I remember the very first thing I said, all right, the clutch is like your insurance policy. Like if it went in doubt, just clutch in. Go ahead and put your foot on the leftmost pedal. And do you know those moments where you see kid logic, like where a three to five year old does something and you can appreciate how they made that decision knowing what they know, even though it's completely wrong. So what she does is she takes her right foot, crosses all the way over, presses the clutch in. And I'm like, I see why you came, to <laughs> but that's, Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. And so eventually like we figure it out mostly and she, she ends up like figuring out how the clutch works and how the gas pedal works. I've since iterated my explanation of how to drive a manual many times in case I run into this situation again. But to my surprise, I don't recall her stalling it. Like for such a very intimidating start to that process with the whole like right foot on clutch thing, it went pretty harmlessly and we eventually got off the dirt road. She drove me close enough to town to where I felt comfortable that like wasn't being followed by anyone and I got back in the driver's seat and drove the rest of the way because Tallahassee has a lot of hills. And while I was confident in her ability to not stall and shift gears without grinding, 
I was not very confident in her ability to start on a hill that was at a 45 degree angle. We made it home and uh, I don't remember her ever asking to go street racing ever again or to a car meet of any sort. The story of your dream car starts with finding it, and the best way to do that is with Autotempest.com. Autotempest allows you to compare the results from Craigslist nationally with all the top listing sites. So visit Autotempest.com today, and before long, you'll be making some amazing car stories of your very own.